Hey, welcome to Thermochemistry Part 1. And I'm Miss Raiden, and uh, Danone High School, we're going to be doing some vodcasts, three parts actually, for thermochemistry. And we're going to learn a lot, and, and the reason we're going to do this is it's kind of an easy thing to learn on your own. Plus, we're going to get right into thermochemistry right after the Christmas break, so it's going to be great, a great head start um, when we come back, and, uh, and we're going to be learning a lot over these three vodcasts. Let's start with uh, our thermochemical quantities. These are the quantities that we're going to measure, or we're going to calculate, we're going to interpret um, while we're doing these thermo problems. And the first thing we're going to take a look at is a thing called enthalpy. And many people think enthalpy is just like heat, and it kind of is, but it's more of the total energy in a system, in a system. And the symbol for enthalpy is delta H, delta H. And it can either be positive or negative. If it's positive, we have gained energy or gained heat, which m means it absorbed. It's endothermic. If it's negative, negative means it's gone out of the system. It's released. It's exothermic. It's exothermic. And our units for delta H are kilojoules per mole. Our next quantity is a thing called entropy. If you want to know what entropy is, just look at your room. It's the second law of thermodynamics that says that everything goes towards more disorder. And that's what entropy is. Entropy is disorder. And so the symbol for disorder is delta S. Because, of course, disorder begins with an S. Um, no, they, I, I don't know how they came up with that. But this symbol is delta S. Positive means you have more disorder. And negative, of course, means you have less disorder. Just with the positive and negative. It, it makes sense. Now, if you have gases or many, many, many moles of something, it's going to be going towards more disorder. If you have like a solid or it's going towards more order or, or less moles, it's less disorder. It's going to be negative. And the units are joules per mole Kelvin. You can see that we're going to multiply this by temperature eventually to get that Kelvin out. But I'll talk a little bit more about those units in just one second. Our third quantity is a thing called Gibbs free energy. And Gibbs free energy, the symbol for that is delta G, delta G. And what Gibbs free energy means is spontaneity, whether something occurs spontaneously or not. Positive means it's non-spontaneous. It does not occur without you doing something, uh, putting in huge amounts of energy, or the conditions being perfect. And negative means it's spontaneous. It just happens. It just occurs um, with a little bit of activation energy. Our units for Gibbs free energy are kilojoules per mole. And all three of these quantities, enthalpy, entropy, and Gibbs free energy, all come together in one formula, one simple formula, which is delta G equals delta H minus T, which is temperature in Kelvin, times delta S. And take a look at this, this formula. We're, we're subtracting on the one side, and so we got to make sure in a subtraction or addition problem, all of our units are the same. Which means if you're going to do enthalpy in, in kilojoules and you're going to do entropy in joules and Gibbs free energy in kilojoules, you're going to have to change one of them. You're going to have to change everything in the kilojoules or everything in the joules. And just keep that in mind when you're doing these problems uh, using a calculator. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example of a problem that you would see for this. Um, we have two moles of hydrogen gas plus a, one mole of oxygen gas, giving us two moles of liquid water. We're producing liquid water. And of course, this reaction, it says it proceeds spontaneously. We get water all the time as a liquid. And it, it's at standard conditions at 298 Kelvin. And the first thing they ask us in A is predict the sign of the entropy change, the delta S for the reaction. Now take a look at your reaction. Are we going towards more disorder or less disorder? And of course, we're going towards less disordered. Because we're going from two gases, a lot of disorder, to a liquid, something that's a little more ordered. And so our delta S is going to be negative here. It's going to be negative. And then B says, what is the sign of delta G 
that gives free energy, whether this is spontaneous or not, at 298 Kelvin. And of course, this reaction is spontaneous. It happens. And so our value for delta G is negative. It's negative. Okay? Now, C says, what is the sign of delta H? What's the sign of the enthalpy at 298 Kelvin? And guys, they didn't tell us anything about enthalpy. They didn't tell us whether it's endothermic or exothermic or whatever it is. And so we have to go to our delta G equals delta H minus T delta S formula. And we got to plug in the, the symbols that we know. If you see on the right hand side, it says minus a negative. What, is it, what does minus a negative mean? It means we're adding a positive, doesn't it? Okay. And so really on the right hand side, it has a positive value for, for that T delta S. And we want to have it equal a negative value. So what does delta H, what does enthalpy have to be? It's got to be negative, doesn't it? It's got to be negative, which means that this reaction is exothermic. It's exothermic. The next thing we're going to learn is how to determine the enthalpy of the reaction, the, the amount of kilojoules per mole in a total reaction. There's actually three ways to do it that we'll learn over the next two parts of our thermo vodcast, but we're going to learn the first one tonight, and that is delta H of the reaction, the enthalpy of the reaction is equal to the sum of, that's what that crazy looking E means, it means the sum of or adding up all the heats of your products minus adding up all the heats of your reactants. And believe it or not, we can do this for delta S and we can do the same exact thing for delta G. We can do the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. And just a thing to keep in mind is do not forget, do not forget to multiply by the number of moles that you have, because that comes into play. Let me give you an example of a, of a problem that you would see. If you ever see where they give you a table with heats of formations, how much heat it took to form these compounds. If you see for the, the methanol, CH3OH, it, it gave off, it released 201, negative 201 kilojoules per mole to form that compound. Carbon dioxide, it took negative 394 kilojoules to release to make carbon dioxide. To make water, negative 242. If you see, oxygen gas is not on there. Oxygen gas, guys, you can't form it. It's just oxygen gas, okay? Unless you're God, you can't do that, okay? Um, it, it just, it's, it's already formed. You can't form, it's not a compound, it's a pure substance. And so if you see heats of formations, you're going to go to this delta H of your reaction equals the heat of your products minus heat of your reactants. And you can, you can take a look at what we're going to do. We're going to go to our products. We have two carbon dioxide, so I'm going to multiply that value times two. And we have four water, so I'm going to multiply that value times four. And I'm going to add up all of those values in red, which is my products. I'm going to go over to my reactants, and I'm going to multiply two times the methanol and three times zero because oxygen gas is it just doesn't there's no heat to form it it's already formed it's a pure substance like I said and so we're gonna add up all the re products and we're gonna add up all the reactants and we're gonna do products minus reactants and we end up getting a value of negative 1354 kilojoules per mole which means this combustion reaction is exothermic Okay. The problem you're going to do for me is this problem. You're going to take the potassium chlorate decomposition reaction, and I've already balanced it for you, and I've given you the heats of formations. Okay. And the thermo part one question that you're going to do for me is, using the heats of formation, calculate the enthalpy of the reaction. If you don't know how to do this, go back and watch the podcast again. I explain it um, in the last couple slides. B says, does this reaction absorb or release heat? Explain your answer. So tell me whether it absorbs or releases heat. Okay? And how you figured that out. C says, what's the sign of delta S? Explain your answer. Just a quick explanation is sufficient. And then D says, what is the sign of delta G? And justify your answer. Okay? Um, you don't have to show your work per se, but make sure you write your work down on a piece of paper. That way, if I have any questions or if it's not right, I'm going to email back, and you have to do this along with the other two parts the same exact way before the end of break. Hope this has been helpful, and this is part one of Thermo. 
uh, make sure you do part two and part three. I'll talk to you later, Danelle in high school. Hope your Christmas break is going well. Thanks.